Okay, so this talk is not really about um, networks specifically, although I did used to work with networks. Um, sure, it'll come up. This is the extra slide. Okay, so it's my contention that we have an ethical crisis in technology. So I'm just going to run through a bunch of examples from the last year or two. So here's a, here's a self-driving Uber car killing a pedestrian. Um, Um, I think I think they want to stay close to the thing anyway for the oh. recording. So, yeah. so we got a self-driving Uber car killing a pedestrian in Arizona, where they deliberately said, "Sure, come come and drive your self-driving cars, even though we know they're not quite ready yet, and we haven't brought in any kind of real regulatory framework. It'll be grand. It wasn't quite grand." Um, <laughs> this um, this is a quote. <laughs> This is a quote about um, an IBM Watson, and it's artificial intelligence that's supposed to be doing cancer diagnostics. Um, the doctors were not impressed, and they say that IBM are really heavily kind of pushing this from a marketing perspective before it's ready. Um, this is obviously a well-known thing. This is the, uh, the whistleblower who um, revealed the story of Cambridge Analytica and how, how they har quite cynically harvested uh, profile information from Facebook for purposes of election manipulation. Here's another one that, I mean, I find this one particularly horrific. Um, so uh, you re remember earlier this year, this whole thing about children in cages um, because uh, the US uh, border protection people were um, separating families at the border. Um, so it turns out they have this sort of expert system that does risk assessment. And, you know, it's, they wanted to change their policies to be, you know, harsher on immigration, right? So rather than doing this honestly with a public conversation and actually setting policy on this, they just changed the system. That's, I think, pretty horrific. And I told this story, um, I was at the United Nations at a, at, a, at a meeting, this is a whole different story, but I mentioned this and the US diplomat walked out of the room and that was awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> it's apropos of nothing really. Um, this is the uh, logo for a thing called um, the US, uh, what is it, the Algorithmic Warfare Cross-Functional Team. Has anyone seen this before? This, this is the Project Maven thing. This is where the US Department of Defense thought it would be awesome to get a whole bunch of tech companies to, uh, to use their uh, ad targeting snake oil to kill brown people in the desert. And I'm quoting Jamie Zawinski here, who was uh, one of the Mozilla founders. Um, so you, the, yeah, you can't really see it on this screen, but these robots all have like adorable little rainbows and happy things on them. The, um, the Latin proverb uh, translates as, our job is to help. <laughs> Um, yeah, which puts me in mind of the famous Reagan quotation, uh, the nine most terrifying words in the English language, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. I think the, the new 2019 or 2018 version maybe should be, I'm a robot, I'm here from the government and I'm here to help. Okay, so, um, and this sort of brings me into the main meat of the talk. Um, the revelations around Project Maven and the fact that we're, we're having consumer tech companies secretly applying their technology to warfare without the knowledge of, of the, the people working there, most of them, it, it sort of sparked this wave of technology activism. This is a quote from the, uh, the, the anti-Maven letter that was um, signed by, I think, more than 4,000 Google employees, of which I was proudly one of them. It got a lot of media coverage, and it also kicked off like a wave of other, here's some, some of the media coverage. The art departments in every major publication just had a lot of fun with this. Um, it's, it kind of sparked off this big wave of similar action elsewhere. So Microsoft, uh, particularly around the um, ICE um, border um, family separation, child children in cages thing, um, a lot of the stuff was around that um, companies that had contracts with ICE and border protection um, all got kind of their workers got a bit cranky. So uh, we see here Amazon, um, Amazon um, workers, Salesforce workers, and Microsoft workers, as well as Google workers, all sort of got in on the open letter party. There were some some actual consequences or actual you know results of this. So Salesforce made a big song and dance about hiring their chief ethical and humane news officer. Um, more, I guess, uh, from more of a government point of view, this is a really recent report that the US, um, 
This is the Culture, Media and Sport report and it was um, into Facebook and, and, and the whole Cambridge Analytica and election manipulation thing and they've come out very strongly in favour of wanting to regulate Facebook and thinking that they've really, really been sort of doing terrible, terrible things. Um, the European Union has also, um, it's got a draft publication on AI ethics. Um, it's going to be finalised sometime in the next couple of months. <coughs> Up until quite recently, they were accepting commentary on it, and a group that I'm part of, the International Committee for Robot Arms Control, commented. Um, we think it's quite good, but there was a couple of things. Um, it's actually got a lot of really good specific guidance on on ways to make sure that your artificial intelligence implementations are ethical, not just as a sort of a, a, a stark code of conduct like something like like you might see in any professional association. So it's pretty good. So there's been some success. Um, you know, there's been a sort of uh, there's been a huge amount of media coverage of of the ethical issues that we're seeing in technology. That's great. Um, European Union is taking notice. Um, governments are taking notice of what's going on. Um, workers are starting to sort of, you know, talk about these issues and starting to take responsibility for some of the issues as well. So I think. One of the interesting things that came out of this as well, last year, Stack Overflow, they do an annual developer survey. And last year, they started asking about ethics for the first time. So it turns out that technologists mostly want to do the right thing. 80% um, think that we have a obligation to consider the ethical implications of our code. And where it says code, I mean, networks as well. I mean, networks certainly have ethical implications. Um, you know, we need to think about privacy and security of the data that traverses the paths and, you know, what are we, are we, are we censoring things? You know, not pointing at any particular sponsor. Um, anyway, 50% of us apparently would report unethical code if they saw it. 40% of us would write unethical code if, if asked. Apparently most people said it depends, but um, what, 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 that, what the interpretation of that is, is we'd do it, but we would feel bad. Um, only 20% actually feel responsible for their unethical code in the end. Um, and that's a really interesting thing. And I think that's mostly because most of us, we work on such big, complex things. And, and with so many other people, everyone's just doing a little bit, contributing a little bit. Um, and very often, what we're working on is, has so many potential uses that we, you know, it, something can be turned to, to, to an unethical use and we may not have anticipated it. So what can we do if, as technologists, uh, if we see or we're asked to do something unethical? We've got basically three things that we can do in response to that. One of those things is to raise the alarm. So, you know, go talk to management, um, you know, tell them that you have concerns about something. Two, there's going to be two major outcomes of that. Um, one potential outcome is they say, oh, why? We had not realized that there were potential ethical issues with this thing. Thank you for, for pointing that out. We will go and consider this more carefully. But more often, uh, what, what they turn around and they say things like, well, you know, we have to do this thing because we have an obligation to increase shareholder value, which you absolutely don't have an obligation to increase shareholder value um, by unethical means. Your second thing that you can do is you can stand up and leave. You can leave the project, you can leave the company, which is what I did after Project Maven because I couldn't stand to work for Google anymore. Um, that has problems too. First off, not everyone is a position, in a position to do that. People have, you know, People need money, people need visas, there's all sorts of reasons. Secondly, if all the ethical people leave a company, then you kind of end up maybe in a worse place than you started off, that's a big problem. The third thing is, a lot of the time in engineering and technology, um, ethical issues are arising because, um, not because the actual intent of whatever is being done is bad, but because maybe they're, it's under-resourced and you haven't spent enough time doing you know, security and privacy work, for instance, or reliability work. So in that case, leaving the project is, is potentially making the problem itself worse. You can become a whistleblower. That might work. In many cases, um, things that are ethically unsound may not be illegal, so you can't always whistleblow to the authorities with any particular <coughs> effect. And the media are not necessarily going to care unless you're talking about a um, you know, an organization that's got a high media profile. So, none of these things are perfect. I'm going to uh, take a digression for a moment. Um, who here has heard of a thing called Grable? Um, that's associated with Uber. Okay, most of you haven't. Great. Um, Grable was a tool that Uber wrote, and it's what, what, they, what they did with it is, was 
They used it to try and figure out who was a government regulator. And whenever a government regulator would log into the app, it would show them a different map. So maybe it would show no cars or the cars are all far away or something. And the intent here was to avoid regulation by, by taxi regulators. So to make them think that they weren't operating in an area that they were operating in or to stop particular drivers from being, from you know, going and taking, taking a fare from these regulators and getting fines themselves or whatever. This is a terrible, right? I mean, you know, regulation and law are not, not the same as ethics. They are very different things. But, you know, trying to circumvent the regulations that people in a city have, have chosen and freely decided upon is, is not an ethical thing. So Grey Ball is terrible, right? Problem is, when Grey Ball was first um, designed and implemented, what it was actually for was to protect Uber drivers from maybe rival taxi drivers or anybody else who... Who, see, who, was, who was being abusive to drivers and who might cause drivers harm. So the idea of Great Ball originally was to, um, was to protect drivers, and it just became subverted <coughs> completely. So the big problem that we face as technologists is, you know, the, a lot of the things that we build and write are, you know, they're, they're like Play-Doh, you know. You build one thing, but, you know, somebody comes along later and spends five minutes just squishing it into, into a slightly different shape that does something very different. So. You know, a lot of it. You know, a lot of it doesn't boil down to what we do as technologists, but it boils down to how ethical are the organisations that we work for. <coughs> does anybody know what this picture is? No. Excellent. Great. Someone does. What is it? Is that the giant molasses slide? The giant molasses flood. Very good. Top of the class for Donal. Uh, okay. So the reason I'm showing this slide. This is a. So a molasses flood sounds pretty funny, but actually uh, there was something like 20 people died and 150 were injured. Um, there was a wave of molasses that was 8 metres high and moved at 35 miles per hour through Boston. And it, uh, it, it, it swept buildings off its foundations and it, and it bent metal girders. But it was also, and apparently the, the corpses that they pulled out of the molasses later on were described as glazed which is just a terrible mental image. Enjoy your donuts tomorrow. Um, so this is a turning point in, um, in a fight that engineers were having with their employers, essentially. So there was a movement in, in the engineering, like civil engineering and um, all the other engineering professions in the UK, US at the time. There were people who were campaigning to unify the engineering profession, like, like the way that the American Medical uh, Association is, is just one single um, unified association. They were trying to um, unionize, and they were trying to sort of bring in more ethical code, uh, kind of codes of conduct and stuff. They were also trying to promote the idea that the engineers were um, professionals, um, and professionals have a first duty of care to the public good, not to their employer. You, have, you first have a duty to the public good, you cannot do something for your, even if your employer tells you to um, that risks public safety. So, and so that's that's the difference between an engineer and a sort of a technical worker. The engineer is, has this first duty to the public good. So, what happened in the end? Um, well, they didn't manage to unify the industry and they didn't manage to unionize, but there did become a, a new consensus <coughs> that engineers were professionals and you know had the responsibility to act in public pu act in favor of public safety and to uh, and to whistleblow if necessary um, there was another interesting thing that happened around that same time or shortly after um, the big big crash of 1929 that led into the great depression um, without talking too much about the crash itself after the crash uh, the glass steagall act was brought in which prevented banks from basically investing their customers money in a risky way um, Later on, and that worked well for many years, and its repeal in the early noughties by Bill Clinton um, was thought to be one of the factors that led into the 2008 financial crash. So what I'm talking about here is regulation. We've traditionally sort of left the tech industry as a very lawless space, and because of the commercial pressures that, that prevail in a lawless space, there's a pressure to, to do whatever you can to, to make profit, because it's hard to compete with people who are doing less ethical things. So I think regulation would be good, but regulation obviously has its problems as well. GDPR, for example, has not been good for small businesses. So regulation has to be has to be thought out well and given uh, there needs to be a very clear and easy path for, for compliance with it. I think anybody who cares anybody in technology, anyone who's an engineer who cares about ethical issues, 
consider joining a union. Unite is very interested in engaging with the Irish technical community. Uh, 19 euros a month. Uh, if, if there's 50 uh, tech workers actually join, we can have a tech sector branch. Um, and in the meantime, they can be, you know, um, they, they can fight your corner if you have any issues with your employer. So I think it's kind of worth joining. Um, we should all be thinking about, you know, the changes in our industry over time and sort of patterns that, of, of, of ethically problematic things that we see. Um, think about continuing education in, in ethics that you, that you can do. There isn't really much sort of formal technical um, ethics education in, in Ireland that I know of. There is a group called Tech Won't Build It Dublin, which I founded. Um, we have a Twitter account, we have a meetup, and we have a meetup in one week where we're going to discuss the Weapons of Math Destruction book by Cathy O'Neill. Um, I'm also going to call out another organisation that I'm part of, um, which is the or organisation to ban killer robots, um, lethal autonomous weapons, drones that can fly around and kill you. We think this is bad, and that's what brought me to the United Nations, per my earlier story. Uh, so there's a Twitter for that. Um, I'm tr Next month we want to do one of these boiler suit photos in Dublin, as a sort of a consciousness raising effort. So if anybody wants to come and wear a boiler suit, um, the please uh, message that Twitter or talk to me later. Uh, so I think I am going to be out of time imminently. I'll be around afterwards if anyone wants to grab me and talk to me. Thank you so much.